Much like how Majora's Mask is the dark roast to Ocarina of Time's house blend, Banjo-Tooie does without the cream and sugar of Banjo-Kazooie as a straight shot of black espresso. Even as a kid, I picked up on just how grim the opening sequence is, and it's left an impact since. I never finished the game up until now, but I always remembered it in a somber light, and it's no wonder why. After reveal that Gruntilda is still alive as an animate skeleton, Bottles the Mole, your teacher companion in the first game, is killed off immediately by a lethal spell that destroys Banjo's home. The entire cutscene is moody. It takes place at night during a poker match, raining. The music is intense and turns into a depressing rendition of the cheery overworld theme from The Last Adventure. Seriously, comparing the first five seconds of both games after taking control of Banjo is a stark difference. In both, you start out in front of his house. In the first game, you can turn around and go inside to see a lively setting. Friendly faces looking back as portraits on the walls, a cuckoo clock, and a fully stocked kitchen. In Tui, there's nothing left. It's all charred with a single scorched picture of the bear's sister in sight. The windows are broken, it's sad. Want some helpful hints from a happy bottles to start in the original? In Tui, that same bottles is now a spirit hovering over his burned corpse. But it doesn't end there, so let me put this into context. The character in Banjo-Kazooie was standalone. He's the only mole around with no mention of a family. In Banjo-Tooie, the game that has him murdered at the very beginning makes it a point to introduce him as a family guy. After he's dead, of course. You'll first meet with his curious wife, wondering where her husband has gone off to. Banjo can't work up the courage to admit what's happened, so the entire game is played with the woman furious her spouse hasn't returned for dinner. She's mad at her husband because she doesn't know he's actually deceased. Worse, Bottles has two small children, Goggles and Specky. Both wonder where their papa is, and some honestly black humor comes into play when Kazooie tries to tell them he's been blasted with the spell. With this all said, Bottles does revive at the end. I want to make that clear, but that does not change the fact that his fate isn't known until the end of the game. I never really got close as a kid, so I had no idea. The audience doesn't know that he comes back to life, so experiencing this blind for the first time is quite horrifying. Besides, his family circumstance never gets any better. Mrs. Bottles doesn't believe that her husband died, and forces him to eat overcooked supper by the time he finally returns home. By the time of Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts, there's a rumor that his wife took the children and left. When questioned, Bottles comes up with two conflicting stories. One is that they're still together and she never left Jinjo Village. The other is that she was mowed over and killed by Grunty. Whatever the case, they have a pretty messed up family life built on lies and distrust. Who knew I would ever say that about a fictitious family of freaking moles? Furthering the topic of death that seems to surprisingly permeate Tui in a similar shadow to Majora's Mask, several characters that do not revive are revealed soon after Bottle's passing when entering Jinjo Village. The Jinjos, if you remember from the original, are friendly NPCs to be rescued by Banjo, and were responsible for sending the witch plummeting to her two-year imprisonment beneath a boulder. In Tui, it's shown where the Jinjos live, a village where each family, one for every color, exists in harmony under rule of King Jingling. Unfortunately, after being freed from her grave, Grunty disrupts this peace by driving a giant drill straight through their settlement. Each of the nine Jinjo families are scared away and separated with their houses still standing, but a tenth building, home to the Grey Jinjos, 
was completely demolished by the hag. It's presumed the Grey Jinjos were the largest family, but they all perished as denoted by a single signpost clearly outlying their fate. This isn't subtle. A whole family of friendly creatures were murdered on behalf of Grunty, something the player can discover within the opening half hour. As a now abandoned village, King Jingling is the sole inhabitant and the first victim for our skeleton antagonist's newfangled plan to absorb all organic life in the isle and restore her old body. The machine is called B.O.B., which was rare having fun with acronyms as that can also stand for Battery Operated Boyfriend with a blow and suck option to boot which activates and drains the poor king until he's no longer of the living. He's a zombified ruler in a lifeless castle, with his poor pet reduced to a pair of eyeballs on a pile of ash. King Jingling's fate after Grunty's defeat is better than Bottles, but it's still very much deserving of a Dark Aspect Award as again, we're not even an hour into the game yet. Calming down a bit, Let's talk about some minor deaths. In the seventh world, Hailfire Peaks, which is clearly similar sounding to Hellfire, <laughs> sees three characters that either pass away on screen or have already died. Saberman is the latter, an explorer frozen solid and without a pulse by the time he's uncovered, so fire eggs do not work in making him come too. Additionally, the father of an alien tribe falls from his high-flying saucer and dies upon hitting the ground. But more shocking is that one of his three missing children is found already dead and buried beneath a patch of ice. These characters are eventually revived through Mumbo's magic, but that's a whole lot of death in one E-rated title, especially in just one small area of a massive level. But those were all accidental deaths. Let's get back to the topic of murder, shall we? At the end of the game, Grunty's equally naughty sisters meet a fate that they don't come back from when crushed by a one-ton weight. And their demise isn't met by the hands of Banjo. Gruntilda is the one that kills off two members of her own family, simply for losing at her Tower of Tragedy quiz. As much as I love talking about the afterlife, it's uh, time to move on and see what developers rare snuck past the radar to have fun. The precursor in writing to what would become Conquer is a step up from the original in terms of adult jokes, and that's really saying something if you watched my first video. The creators went no holds barred here and it's a wonder how a lot of this obvious content didn't get cut. If you liked Grunty's wonderful life-sucking machine reading B.O.B., then you may be happy to hear that her other machines have abbreviations equally inappropriate. For example, her giant T.I.T., which stands for Time Interfering Truck. Granted, this isn't in an actual game, but it was part of Rare's published news column Disinformation Central back when Nuts and Bolts was in development. The fact that they joke about this potentially being in the third game clearly cements their humor. They even refer to the witch in the original Game Over sequence as Sexy Post-Transformation Grunty. An abbreviation that does make it into Tui though is the Big O Blaster. Big O commonly refers to an orgasm. Big O Pants, too, are also plastered all over the crates at Grunty Industries probably getting ready for shipment to your local good stuff. Grunty Industries is the source of pollution in Jolly Roger's swimming hole, to the dismay of child friends Piggles and Trotty. The two piglets are sad because the water's too cold and grimy. Unfortunately, Trotty was pushed in as a prank and mutated from the waist. He grew a third arm after surfacing and expresses concern that he may also be growing a third leg. It's probably not a leg he's referring to there. <laughs> the poor kid is sensitive about his arm though, and Kazooie takes advantage by yelling, Frico! So brutal. Since we've arrived at Jolly Roger's Lagoon, let's talk about Jolly Roger himself. He's the mayor and owner of a harborside tavern, serving ginger beer, which is traditionally non-alcoholic, 
but apparently not in this universe, as it's strong enough to get Captain Black Eye to fall off his chair. His other menu items include salty dumplings, toad in the hole, and semen surprise. His partner, Mary Maggie, even invites the pair to grab a sailor night at the bar, where they can get five tankards of that semen special. It's a good thing you rescued her too, because there's mention of Jolly needing a little relief during happy hour. Highly, highly suggestive. Ginger beer is also Cockney rhyming slang for queer. Paired with his flamboyant nature, Jolly is depicted as the stereotype of a gay man, which is a big no-no for Nintendo's censors, especially in the year 2000. But diving deep into the lagoon depths from there hides Lord Wu Fak Fak, and he's an interesting case. The self-important anglerfish is based on a real person. Paul, an engineer at Rare who had a reputation for swearing and shouting WOO after figuring out a problem. You can guess what Fak is inspired by in this case. Besides language, the fight is a bit visually disturbing as it involves shooting and popping boils that actually bleed out. Later versions of Ocarina of Time censored Ganondorf coughing up blood to, uh, make him vomit. So why was Tui okay? Speaking of suggestive themes in boss fights, Mr. Patch, the strange, wobbly, inflatable, has a sealed air tube sticking out right in between his legs. When he's eventually defeated by exposing the patched up air holes, the tube pops open and causes the living balloon to fly away, deflating. Funny they decided to move the plug to his belly in nuts and bolts. In another world, Pterodactyland, the pathway to Mumbo's skull is unapologetically in the shape of a... <gasps> Mumbo's spell for this level also happens to be called Enlarge, something he performs on the pathway to paint an even more obscene picture, especially when looking down from the cliffside. Fun fact too, this and Earthbound were two of the things that inspired me to make dark aspects just because this is so shocking. I could not believe they put this into the game and got away with it. 